Okay, be live. All right. Shabbat Shalom. This is the Brothers of GMS New Orleans coming at you with another live Shabbat lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe, as well as you a few sincere sisters out there diligently listening and learning. Shabbat Shalom. May y'all endure until the end. And with this uh, Shabbat lesson, we're just going to get into this wicked hell day we're coming into. Might as well be the most wicked hell day out there next to, next to Halloween, uh, Christmas, as it's so-called. And Christmas, nothing about it's biblical. And uh, the Messiah, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus Christ, wasn't born on, on Christmas Day. This is all just idolatry and, and paganism and madness. Christmas goes back to Saturnalia, which is a, a pagan Roman orgy festival around, around this time back in ancient Rome. And when you go into the symbolisms of, of the tree and the different decorations, that goes into sex worship, uh, the worship of of uh, Tammuz and uh, Nimrod, just all kinds of madness out here. Nothing holy, biblical, or scriptural about it. And the Bible directly cuts uh, modern day Christmas because it's not modern at all. Again, it goes back to ancient pagan practices. But as it says in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter one, there is nothing new under the sun. That which has been is that which shall be. All these ancient pagan practices and customs have just been stolen by the biblical Edomites and these so-called white people and just translated to today in a new form and fashion. But it's still wicked. But we'll start it off with uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse one. Con, this is the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Hear ye the words which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. A point blank period. Learn not the ways of the heathen. And when we go to the laws, does it say anything about Christmas? Does it say anything about getting together? putting presents under a tree, uh, decorating a tree, drinking eggnog, or anything like that. Of course not. This is all, again, going back to customs of these different heathens from the past, just translated today. We have our own high holy days, which we're supposed to practice. You know, the Day of Atonement, the Passover, which is coming up, the, the, the Feast of Weeks, Feast of Booths, all that. Feast of what? Which one? The Feast of Booths. Booths. Oh, go ahead. Kind. Feast of Booths. Yeah. Bo booths, Boots. like a booth. <laughs> like a phone booth. What is that? Tabernacle. Yeah, Feast, feast of Tabernacles. Say it, say it, just, say it right. <laughs> oh, kind, kind. Yeah, we have, we have our own high holy days that we're supposed to supposed to practice which has nothing to do with these 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 wicked pagan holidays out here especially christmas when when, when you go into the origins of christmas which uh hey yeah how is i rock desire we have the time to do so you'll just see how how wicked and depraved it all is keep going on kind of verse three it says for the customs of the people of vain for one cutteth a tree out of the forest the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. And for the customs of the people are vain. Their customs, their fake gods they believe in, all their practices is, is, is vain and BS and, and holds no weight. The, the one true power is uh, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And as, as we can clearly see, what is still around today in, in of course, of course, you've got these different denominations out here that completely butcher the Bible. But what is still around regardless? The Bible, the scriptures, which you can still read. But when you look at all these ancient practices from Assyria, Egypt, uh, 
the Persian Empire or anything like that, they're gone. You have to be a historian to remember those ancient gods or their practices. And they've had to be what re reformed and fashioned in different ways to be brought to these modern times. So they've had to have been changed, showing how vain they are, how much weight or power they don't hold. But the one thing that's always been a constant is the scriptures and these prophecies. But as it goes into, for one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. And how did they get those uh, Christmas trees? You got the, the logmen going into the woods and cutting down all them pine trees so they can sell them, bring them to these different markets so people can go and pick out the, the best tree that they want to get. And then what? When they bring it home, what do they do with it? Keep going, at Kind of verse four. It says, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They deck it with silver and gold. They put the tinsel on it, the, the Christmas balls, however else people like to decorate it. And they put that, that star on top of it. And how do, you, how do they keep it fastened to the ground? I know way back in the day, people would literally have that little cross piece of wood that they would nail the bottom of the tree in to keep it standing up. But now they got the little thing that you put it in there and you kind of twist, twist the little drill bits into it. But regardless, it's fastened to the ground because it cannot stand up. Keep going. Up. Verse five. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them for they do evil. Neither slack it. For they cannot do evil, neither also is there is it in them to do good. And hey, in modern times, people, you know, they put the pres the presents under the tree and, and you know, wake up in the morning and open the presents. But when you go back to the ancient times, hey, that, that tree was literally seen as an idol, as a god that will that people would uh pray and, and give reverence to. I believe I know it definitely goes back to Nimrod. The tree literally symbolizes Nimrod's rod. Uh, Nimrod and his mother, I believe his mother was was Tammuz. To the brothers that no. know, know uh, off the top of the head. Semiramis. 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 It goes Tammuz back to the worship. Oh, kind. It goes back to the, the the worship of Nimrod and Semiramis. And again, in the past, it was literally worshipped as a as a as a god. But as it just said, fear them because they can neither do evil or good. They can't even stand upright upon themselves. Just another false idol, just like other, all these other false idols out here that they, that they make the statues and worship, but they can't do anything. When you read throughout the scriptures, they'll give examples about how they have to be, you know, wiped off, dust wiped off of them. They have to be clean. If they fall over, they have to be picked back up because, again, it's just false idols out here. The only thing you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans should be worshiping is Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and following after the laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of your abilities are high holy days, which don't involve any damn Christmas. Kind of like I had too, like, uh, you know, and the reason why they come and uh, place those presents under the tree because you know the old fable goes that Nimrod would come back on the anniversary, anniversary which is December the twenty fifth, and and bring gifts to that evergreen tree, you know with these uh like you say these boneheaded there's like that in they in their living room right now, you know so you're just doing the old, you know Babylonian, you know uh pretty much fable man, mm -hmm. you know pagan custom, you know and they our people still wrapped up into this day, you know saying oh it's it's for the kids. You know, you're 50 years old, your kids in college now, but you're still crying. Oh, it's for the kids. You know, you just wrapped up in these uh these traditions. You know, men, man. Man, fuck the kids. Gun. You doing it? You doing it because you you your ass wants to still still live in the in the in the Christmas holiday Babylonian spirit. And like with the lesson we went into yesterday, Jake. Jake trying so hard to upkeep this kingdom, but you're going to you're going to go down with it. You're going to get destroyed. The Christmas tree is going to get destroyed. And then Christmas presents you get for the kids, which they're going to forget about in the next month or so. That's all going to get destroyed. And, and Nimrod was, was sleeping with his mother, Semiramis. So you, 
you're worshiping a a damn a damn deity that was an incestual freak. It all goes back. It all goes back in sex worship, man. Mm -hmm. You know those men back in Rome used to have orgies amongst themselves, man, with the winter solstice and shit. Okay. It's like you know we can go we can if you want to go there we can go there on all the things the colors of Christmas you know what what those what those different ornaments on the tree what the, the meaning of them you can we can really go there and it all the sex works the the Christmas tree itself nothing more than a phallic symbol right it's, it symbolizes a, a rod man if you don't understand what a rod is you need to go look all right a man's magic all right. Just to be PG. I and got the same, a... the same thing been going on for years. I wish you Israelites you caught up. All right, you caught up right up in this madness, man. Go ahead. I... Yeah, I got some of them uh, articles just going into the 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 history. Just the origins of, of the, these so-called modern-day traditions, which, again, they're not modern. They go back to ancient sex, pagan, freakism worship. But uh, I got one article from GQ. And, and you know, GQ is a, a so-called re reputable magazine, gqmagazine.co.uk. The History of Christmas Sex. And the very first thing it says, Romans gone wild. For the Romans, and I'll show the article too. As you can see, it says, Romans gone wild. For the Romans, one week at the end of December, at the end of December, <laughs> and, and where does, uh, when, when does jolly old Christmas take place? at the end of December, was reserved for merrymaking, <laughs> Merry Christmas. From the 17th to the 23rd, December, every year, the festival of Saturnalia celebrated the god Saturn. And when you go into the, the origins of, of the god Saturn, that goes back to Satan. There are many similarities, but many similarities between Saturnalia and Christmas, and that's because it's the same holiday the same hella day including using bows of holly as decoration giving gifts and feasting like the office christmas party the end of a productive year needed to be celebrated in suitable style the strict class divisions and stresses of being at the center of the ancient world was tiring frustration built up you know at the when, when the year comes to an end, everybody gets in that spirit of, oh, hey, buy everybody a present. Let's, let's look forward to the new year. What's my new year's resolution? I'm going to be a different person. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to quit being a drug addict or an alcoholic, all that. But, you know, by uh, the midport of January, you still bugged out. If I could, real quick, if I could bring this out. Con, you got um, it. You say something about the, the, the did you mention the mistletoe? Uh, not yet. Well, when but, you go on etymology on, online with missile, or uh, where they, the word mistletoe derived from, when you look into the word missile, it means hence to, to miss, or hence to find rain, or to urinate. So when you stand out of the, the mistletoe, you know, and, you, and, you, and you're kissing your boo, like the elder brother always say, Jake under the mistletoe kissing his boo, or whatever it is, you go into the root word or the etymology of that word missile, it's missile, which is the, it means to urinate, man. All right, see all these ancient customs that Jake do, everything that you do surrounding Christmas is often wicked, man. That's why the Lord say, I hate your feast days and your new moons and your solemn assemblies because everything that you do, it replicates abominations. It replicates idolatry, whether it's the tree, whether it's wrapping the tree with the ornaments, whether it's wrapping the tree with the uh, the green thing, at, which is, uh, which one of them is the, the semen? The tinsel. The, the, the tinsel is the semen. I got it right man. here. 
because it's just, brother, listen, everything about it is off. When you do something that's off, it's a full abomination. You can't see, oh, this is clean inside of it. This this part clean we do. Even the mistletoe, man, you is a, a representation of getting pissed on your head almost off, urinated over, man. But go ahead, brother, you got it. I just want to bring it down real quick. Have having Nimrod Nimrod piss on you. Yeah, a missile thrust. But that's <laughs> neither here nor done. Go ahead, brother. I, I don't want to get vulgar like that. Just go ahead, bro. Kind of, kind of. Well, shit, since you brought up a little bit of that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Jake should get it, but they got a lot of you, you guys out there, you still you still you still you still doing it, man. Still celebrating Christmas. You in that 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 spirit, man. You got an ugly an ugly sweater on right now as we speak. All right, that lights up. But you, then you go on the backside, call yourself an Israelite, man. Jake's still going to church. Jake in the church in the church choir for Christmas, man. No, you going off. You know, if you're doing that shit, you off, man. All right, you gotta you gotta come out of the out of the ways of America, man. You know, you gotta do this thing cold hardly, man. Kind. But before we get back into Saturnalia, just to back up what the, the brother Kaya was saying about some of the symbolism, the true symbolisms and meanings behind the different ornaments and instruments of the Christmas tree and just Christmas in general. This is from discover.hubpages.com. I'll show the article. The Christmas story you don't want to hear about, hey, but you are going to hear about it because this is the truth coming out knocking down all these strongholds out here that have that have uh that have that have blinded the people especially our people under the section December 25th December 25th was a date that was chosen for the pagan sun god worship of Baal that could be traced back all the way to ancient Babylon originating with Nimrod and Tammuz these pagan traditions were passed along through many different cultures from the Babylonians, Egyptians, Sumerians, Palestinians, Greeks, Persians, and the Romans. And who just happened to be in captivity under most of those people? The children of Israel. And we know our people constantly went, shit, our people went into captivity for following after these heathen practices. So a, like the majority of our people today, the majority of our people back then, followed after those ancient practices and customs and those vibrations, a pick up with those wicked Jake spirits from the past. So it's easy for them to just fall back into the groove of things and continue the wickedness that they uh, practice in their past lives. I got some real, I mean, and a lot of you Jakes, I remember coming up as a young boy, they used to always call quote unquote Santa Claus, old St. Nick, uh, old uh, uh, St. Nicholas. But when you go look up, you can do this to yourself. Go on dictionary.com or uh, put it in on, on your Google. Put in old Nick, or old Saint Nick. It means the devil, Satan. Mm -hmm. All right. So that, that guy that you got coming coming his ass down the chimney looking for cookies, drinking milk, that nigga's a, a representation of the devil, man. A pedophile devil at that because he always wants the children to sit on, he wants people to sit on his lap. All right. This is what's going on. It's right, it's right in your face, man. Some old creepy nigga. You sits on his lap and tell him, tell him, you tell him how you been naughty and nice, man. All right. Yeah. Go back to Krampus. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say it goes back to Krampus, which is like a demon that haunts children, tortures children, and they, they would sit on his lap. Didn't he didn't he sodomize the children with like twigs and shit? Yeah, he had like a hold up. Let me see if I can put it on the screen. One second. Hold up. <clears throat> yeah. So this is a, a demon named Krampus. He kidnapped children. Look at this, man. And and when he kind of looked like a goat, so you see why Esau be uh, rocks heavy with this with this Krampus Christmas jolly old Saint Nick spirit, a pedophile demon. 
That mm-hmm. perfect example right there. That mm-hmm. sounds like the Pope. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Pope Krampus. <laughs> Licking the kids, chaining the kids up. The that sounds like the Pope. That's something like what the popes do. But that's neither here nor there. Well, go ahead, brother. Shit, they I know over in Europe they got a lot of a lot of Krampus festivals. And, and that's exactly what modern day Krampus is doing to you, Israelites children out there. He's leading them straight to destruction, leading your old ass into destruction too. Yeah, a lot of you people, you in you you worshiping something that you don't even know about. It's deeper, mm-hmm. it's deeper than presidents, it's deeper than under the mistletoe. Drinking eggnog with your book is deeper than that, man. All right, man. Then the brother got the brother right here. Uh, and shout out one, Mike. Yeah, how about you? Sharp, I got that. The brother, shout out one, Mike. Yeah, how about you? Sharp, I got that. He put it up here. What Christmas was the home and say in the end of the which Christmas just found it? God. Shit, just going back to paganism, just all, all of it goes back to paganism. The most recent being Saturnalia during the, the ancient pagan Roman Edomite Empire, which as we're going into with that first article, which uh, we'll get back into, a lot of the same things, the, 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 the singing the Christmas carols, giving presents, having a, having a, a jolly old time, goes back to that. And one of you brothers get that, get that out of the, 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 the private chat too. Con, con. You might if I get some uh, little more information from this article before we read from the private chat. Yeah, go ahead. Con, this is back on that page discover.hubpages.com. The symbolism of the Christmas tree and its ornaments. The Christmas tree is one of the most famous symbols throughout the world where it is ornated with lights and decorations with gifts underneath. Many do not realize what the tree and the decorations actually represent. Pagans, pagans use tree worship thousands of years before the worship of, it says Jesus there, but Yahweh Shai. They would put up a tree, holly, mistletoe, and wreaths that are rooted in the worship toward a pagan fertility god. The Christmas tree or the green tree represents an erect male phallus. The circular wreath represents the female vagina. The silver or colored ball ornaments represent testicles and the tinsel semen and red ribbons are labia. So no wonder, no wonder you people are bugged out out here and your children are bugged out. They don't know whether they coming or they going. They wanna be a, a, a M or an F all that because all the, the christmas tree is literally just a, a giant sex toy you got in your living room you got I'm the tree i'm gonna say this those pony caps that you wear for christmas those were in the roman empire from what i remember those were given to slaves for the week that we could went to solstice man you know and it really like like the brother goes into this it really a, a, it's another phallic symbol but that was given to slaves to wear all right, so they can get down with the with the orgies and everything else during the so- <clears throat> con um, during Saturnalia, just backing you up. It was the one time of the year where the where the slaves and the and the masters would you know symbolically switch roles. So the masters would play like they're the slaves, and the and the slaves get to you know wear the hat you were talking about and be like they were the masters. Yeah, but. Uh, but uh, with the information that the elder brother posted in our private chat, Christmas lesson, the Messiah's birthday was never celebrated by the apostles or Yahweh Shai, which, hey, when you understand in, in the scriptures, Yahweh Shai wasn't born in, on December 25th. He wasn't born in, in, the, in, the, in the fall or the dead of winter. In the Satanic Bible, founder of Levan Satanism, Anton LeVay, who just happens to be a, a 1948er, what a coincidence, writes that after one's own birthday, the two major satanic holidays are Walpurgsnacht, 
a formerly Christian holiday and Halloween, other holidays celebrated by members of the Church of Satan include the two solstices, the equinoxes, the Yule, and Christmas. The church today is fighting against the entertainment saturation society. No, it's not. What church are they talking about? They're talking about the Roman Catholic Church? Sure. They about, are they talking about them? <laughs> are, are they talking about the, 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 the Baptist Church? Are they talking about... Uh, some freaks. Hey, they they got a they they got a the, the Vatican has a, a Christmas celebration every year at Vatican City. But the only church that's truly fighting against it is is the true church of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the men of the Lord, out on the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as putting up video epistles online. And as we can clearly see with each passing day, GMS and the brothers that come in the spirit of GMS are, are, are the ones that Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai has his vibration on. These other camps, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they got the eggnog and some Christmas presents set up on the side. Hey, remember, it's for the kids. Okay. But continuing, the Messiah's birthday was never celebrated by the apostles or Yahweh Shai. Oh, I think that's a, yeah, yeah, that's a, pretty much the same thing. But hey, as the information says, Halloween and, and, and the solstices and, and so-called Christmas and all that, hey, that, those are some, some very celebrated days in Satanism. So you like to say you believe in, in, in God and Jesus and you're doing it for the kids and it's all just a wholesome holiday, you know, goodwill to all men, Merry Christmas and all that. You're, you're rocking in the vibration of Satan and these ancient pagan sex gods of the past, which involve uh, child sacrifice, butchery, debauchery, all that, but uh, before we before we get into showing that Jesus Yahweh Shai was not born on on, on December twenty fifth, I'm just going to le read a little bit more dealing with the uh, Saturnalia. Ooh, ooh. Just real quick in that uh, article on Hub page, I just saw it. Santa Claus slash Krampus. Santa Claus is a false god that attempts to take on the characteristics of the one true God. He is portrayed as an omnipresent and all-knowing being who judges by handing out blessings and curses. Santa is known as the rewarder of good boys and girls. Before the 19th century, there was a beast-like creature named Krampus that was a companion to Santa who captured the naughty boys and girls and put them in a sack in order to eat them. And when we go to Wisdom of Solomon, I believe chapter 17, it talks about how these ancient pagan practices goes into the merciless murderers of children, sex magic, debauchery, and all that. That's what all these modern day holidays, their practices have origins in. And, and look at how things are today. You got a lot of adultery going around, sexual lasciviousness, and behind the scenes, what? The elites of this society sacrificing children and, and uh, sipping on that adrenochrome. Hey, I'm going to say this, bro. Some of the spirit had me look up milk and cookies. Bro, this shit is disgusting, bro. I can only imagine. I... Brother, like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to just, bro, it, it get nasty right here, brother. That milk and cookies shit, brother, man, hey. he defile everything, bro. We might as well bring it out. We, we, we already... I'm going to bring it out. I'm free, brother. Stay PG. Stay, brother. stay PG with it, you know. It, yeah, I'm going to stay PG with it, brother. I don't know what made me do it, brother. I just was thinking of all the customs that go, you know, surround it. Take like, oh, get the milk and cookies. And, you know, kind of like you take the cookie. You kind of know where I'm going at with this, brothers. Like, I'm going to have to say it as PG as I can. And then you got to think of the milk. He a freak. He cutting the, the cookie into a U with a circle in. Hey, brother, let me read it. <laughs> I just typed in milk and cookies, right? And everything else came up behind it, meaning sexually. Like, that just came up. That just, I didn't text that in or nothing. I just typed in milk and cookies. And then sexually came behind it. All right? When you get the Urban Dictionary, milk and cookies, when a woman or man place a cookie between their cheeks, man, brother, <laughs> and pulls milk 
down their back while the other person eats the cook. Hey, <laughs> say, brother, they got songs, eat the groceries and all that. Say, brother, listen, this is shit is wicked, bro. I'm going to go to this one, dude. It says cookies and milk, the best thing in the world, chocolate chip cookies, milk, and get naked, naked pleasures, all at once, all right? It says, uh, bro, bro, I'm going to say this when I got to go. I can't keep elaborating on this is This is ridiculous, bro. And this is what you what what you uh you Jakes have your kids in the kitchen helping you bake the cookies and put them in the oven and that hey hey put the cookies out for on Christmas Eve and pour the milk into the cup so so Santa will have something to fill him up when he when he comes down the chimney. And remember, Santa is the freak that's orchestrating all this. So you got to keep in mind what the freak want. That's why I said that what you were talking about sound like the popes. Like think about what they've been harassed. It says <laughs> milk and cookies. Well, one person <laughs> ejaculates mm. in the other person mouth as the other dukes in it with the chocolate chip cookies, bro. Mm. Hey, come on, dung, man. dung in it. Hey, what does the tinsel on the tree represent? What does the tinsel hey, on the brother, Christmas tree represent? We, we get yeah. just that just that custom alone, brother. Like it just. Damn. And even with the mistletoe, I left this out. It goes. It, it also means the miss, like you know, to hang over. But it means to urinate and to dung. So, for me to see that and then see the mistletoe, it says uh, the May, which is Mazu menses to urinate. A uh, old English magan to urinate, miox dung of filth. So, just it's, it's been explicit and PG enough, brother. It just we talking about one little speck of this, like just the milk and cookies on the side. But go ahead, I hey, nothing new under the sun. I'm gonna why get it on the get it on go to uh go to go to dictionary.com and put it in Selenaria, and it, and it tells you right, it tells you right there. Hey, nothing new under the sun. We know we, everybody's heard the stories by now. What you celebrities have to go through, you know, to get your roles out there. You gotta, you gotta drink, drink lemonade, and and get get dookied on fudge. and eat some dookie cookies, some fudge yeah. cookies. But you into once again, you into something that you y'all don't understand, man. Right? Your your parents, grandparents, cousins, everybody want to be in, feel jolly and have a great time during this year. But they don't know what they're a part of, man. Uh, what is what do they always say? Uh, indirectly or directly, I don't know what you're doing, man. You know, you see what it says on. Um, uh -huh. Hey, what's yeah. that thing you say, Kaya? It's like if you don't if you don't condemn it, you promote it. Yeah, you you don't. Uh, if you permit it, you promote it. Hey, if you, if you permit, you promote. Permit it, that's pretty much you saying I got I I may not do it myself personally, but I got no problem with some um, a man and a woman does in the privacy of their own home. Yeah, gotta have a problem with it, man. Is it just the problem or the solution? Like it can't be both, man. Yeah, read it real. Fast. It's right in your face, right? Kind. It says Saturnalia noun, the festival of Saturn celebrated in December in ancient Rome. As a time of unrestrained merrymaking, revelry, orgy. Revelry, orgy. It means so. Selling it. I got. I got another screen hooked up. It says, "Amongst Christians, the lowercase word selling it came to mean orgy, man. And orgy goes into the word secret, secret worship. And that's what y'all doing. Y'all doing a secret worship. Y'all getting down." That goes back to the the winter solstice, which soul means sun and stis means to stand still. So they well, sun worship, sun worship and sex worship. That's that's the bottom line of all this paganism. And if I can add too, that's why that whole thing with this winter solstice thing, that's why Zelensky come over here. I know it's a little off topic, but Zelensky came over here on the winter solstice, man. So it's all yeah. nothing but pagan worship going on. <laughs> 
He came to get down, uh, too. They uh, get uh, mm-hmm. they want a freak on him now, man. Yeah, they get a $1.5 <laughs> billion in uh, Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how y'all posted it earlier. And they, they had some milk and cookies ready for him when he came by the White House. Yeah. And, and shit. like you said, there's no new thing under the sun. You know, why Jake's so, you know, big on this thing because, you know, they did it in the Egyptian captivity, you know, the Roman and the Babylonian and the Assyrian, man. So you, you got this, you're drawn to throwing that tree somewhere in your house or being around it. You have to have it, man. Mm. And you didn't seen it before. And here it is back again. I think the latest was the Germans that, that kicked it off. And now, you know, they carried it on. And now you niggas, uh, it didn't swung over here to America. Now you niggas going crazy. You know, you refuse to let that thing go, man. Yeah, he'd be the, the toughest, hardest gangster nigga. Christmas come around. Merry Christmas, bro. You niggas. Right. <laughs> 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 Uh, they become you. hospitable. Yeah, you niggas be hospitable than a motherfucker, man. <laughs> all the gun blazing, all that shit come to the end for, for around Christmas, man. All yeah, yeah, like it's it. a, if I could yeah. add, it's a certain spirit you got to get in. You ever yeah. see the way that they advertise or advocate Christmas to everybody? Or oh, it's the Christmas spirit. Christmas in the Oaks. It's a certain spirit. Mm-hmm. See, spirits bring vibrations, man. And then, see, in the Christmas spirit, when you get in the Christmas spirit, you become a mega freak, man. Mm-hmm. According to all the customs and everything, all the thing you got your boo, you got on a lamp. Yeah, you know Jay got the little uh, lamp, uh, the the trussle drug. I mean, uh, the things that go inside their bed. They got, you know, they bit off the cookie and shit, drunk half the milk. And you know your woman probably has some some lingerie, whatever, right? But it brings us a, a freak spirit. The children being all kind of freak spirits, they don't want to go to sleep. I ain't who got children don't want to go to sleep, man. You're in the fucking spirit, man. The spirit on the children, man. You stay up all night. You be weary by the by the. Hey, you got it, all right? Real quick, most of the women get pregnant. Too, man. They get pregnant around Christmas or yeah. when it's cold, right? <laughs> Which lets you <laughs> you in the wrong Christmas when it's cold, and we haven't even started to get on your Howard shot not being born around Christmas. We just giving you some of the customs that surround it. Like we haven't even really got into that, man. But we just giving you customs on how certain vibrations you gotta be under to, in order to even enjoy or entertain this thing, man. You got it on Ryu, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Freaked out around this time, man. That's freak time, bro. Every nigga want to hug you and talk close to your face. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nigga, he want to talk close and hug. Nigga got the reindeer shits on his face. It's just freaky, yeah. man. Everybody got the Santa Claus hat on. The school bus driver dropping the children off. She got the hat on. She in the spirit. Huh? Yeah. You got you want- people walking around dressed up like Santa. Yeah, you gonna trust a nigga that's dressed in all red with a with a with a three inch belt on, big ass shiny. <laughs> Yo, mm-hmm. and the suspenders. And suspenders. The suspenders is what freaks it out, brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> you scrap it over his shoulders. You can't trust no fucking Jake like that, man. Hey, somebody, somebody pull up. I'm a while. Pull up bad Santa and put up an image of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, freakism going on, brother. If I could add to y'all brothers too, and then you know they make it more appealing to say that Santa Claus was a black man to try to get <laughs> Jake's to try to get Jake's involved. Because I know y'all remember the, the the black Santa that we all probably took a picture with out here at the mall. Oh yeah, that nigga. <laughs> I remember that nigga. Died now, man. Nigga dead. Oh shit, I didn't know. I think he dead. Died. Uh, he so- died. He died. Sorry. That nigga died a couple years back. Just about it wasn't that many. Just so y'all all had the same the same Santa group. <laughs> yeah, yeah but everybody the same Santa. When a, once a freak, you get the same freak. <laughs> <laughs> he know how to do it better than everybody. He a professional freak, man. Cause by the time he's freaked out, man. <laughs> you got the one with the chick, the chick licking his ear. 
You heard uh, me? Huh? nineteen got him. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Lord, took his ass out. Yeah, I'm sharing it. Hey, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, this dude freaked out, man. Just look at his face. Yeah, I saw that movie. That's it right there. That's he was terrorizing shit on that dude. He was a thief. Uh, he was a thief. Yeah, the thief coming to steal, kill, and destroy, man. That's right. And he dressed up as Santa Claus. He was drunk right there. He was an alcoholic, pervert. Yeah, I thief. saw that movie. It's crazy. Smoking yeah, cigarettes. God damn. He saw. He 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 puts it out there subtle to you people, man. The truth of what's really going on. You don't you do you take it as you take it as something to, something to laugh at, man. Let me see what the brother put up here. Okay. Yeah, man. Good. I was just trying to see what the brother had put on the thing. I got a precept for you too, brother. Kind, you got it. Then we'll just we'll get into when Yahweh Shai's birth actually took place. Kind, it's the book of Amos, chapter five and verse twenty-one. It says, "I hate, I despise your feast days, I and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies." You know, and it's it's very evident why the law hates these men. You know, these different um feast days that these people hold so high. All right, we just went into a whole slew of shit, you know, atrocities. And that's just, this is just only one feast day, you know, that these, that these people, you know, worship. God, and hey, when, when Israel was going into that precept too, when Israel was celebrating the right high holy days back in the past, Jake was still a degenerate. Jake was still, huh. you know, breaking the laws, but then had the animal, the sacrificial animal to the side. To go to go bring it to get forgiven for sins. Jake just had that outward appearance of, of holiness while on the inside he was a, a, a degenerate, a, a freak. She was a degenerate, a freak. Translated to today, Jake doing the exact same thing. Still a freak. Mm-hmm. Still a freak with a damn uh, a Santa Claus hat on now. And so and <laughs> would you say Yak and I a three inch belt? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> God, but hey, hey, to the sincere Akim and Akwat out there that already know you should know not to be celebrating Christmas, and to the if there are any new new uh, sincere listeners out there, and now you've got the history, some of the history on some of the the things that you know we all we all we all practiced and and did these things in the past when we were living as 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 heathens as Gentiles. But now that we've come into the, this glorious truth, hey, we put those things aside. Now we're doing whatever we can to stay in the good graces of uh, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Because with the way things are looking, this could very well be the last Christmas for you two-thirds out here, for you wicked jakes. Because the only thing that's, that's coming is inflation, hyperinflation, food shortages, war, death, destruction, <laughs> judgment. You mind if I get a quick one for you real quick, guys? Kind, kind, you got it. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 32 and 17. It says a sinful man will not be reproved, but find an excuse according to his will. Hey, and that's, it's for the kids. It's for the yeah. kids. Kind. And like I said, you, you don't you don't want to be that guy. You know, that, that guy or, or, or girl. You know what I mean? Like you have this information. This information has constantly been coming out. Don't you know, don't put the, the kids in the way. Of the shield for you to fulfill your wickedness for your your lust to do all you know this this like i said the atrocities like the brother said man this 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 horrible worship and then this idolatry yeah but uh now let's go scripturally show that uh, yahweh shah's true birthday <clears throat> was uh was not on on december 25th and, and yahweh shai nor did any of our forefathers, our righteous forefathers, celebrate their birthdays because celebrating your birthday is also a wicked pagan practice. And what did our boy uh, Anton LaVey say? That after one's own birthday, 
the two major satanic holidays. So if it's if if after your your oh, your birthday there are two other major satanic holidays, what would that mean? That your birthday is the number one most satanic holiday out there. Now it's to the point where you got people having a birthday week. They could have their birthday could fall on a Sunday, but they start celebrating on a Monday. <laughs> Man, where's your self? Yeah. yeah, but uh, whoever's got that Luke chapter two, you can start at verse one and, and read down to verse eight. Baba Kasha. Come on, it's Luke two and one. Oh, you got it. It's like the pegs. You want to? You got to use all the read, man. Okay, Bayan, you can get me a, you can hold for me Luke chapter 2, verses 39 to 42. Come on. Now, it's Luke 2 and 1. And it came to pass in those days that were, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be taxed. Read verse 2. You can read the verse 3. And this texting was first made when Serenius. Was governor of Syria. To lock it, and all went to. To lock. It. Before you go, can you can you please get that in the private chat to end it off? It's it's going into Rome, the Roman Empire, on what they used to do for Christmas. All right, and it goes into the, with those toys. What those toys was actually symbolizing too, you know. I'm sharing it up. Hold just to end, just to end it off, you know. <clears throat> you can put that in. It's a website. Damn, bro. Roman orgies and toy giving for Christmas, oh, and man. it already starts off with the freak image. You got, you got, you got naked youths and, and him. people getting getting hemmed up. Babies, like what? start at the top. Start at the top. The, the point is in the, the, the last paragraph, though. Uh, you get it. You know, try to I'm, stay peace as you can, but it it just it is what it is. You know, you have to know this. You know, you have to know the the history of, this, of everything. Where if if I can say this, Doctor Nine, two real quick. All right, I'm gonna give a drop it right back to you. you if it. I can say this to Yaka now, we might have to do a part two. To elaborate on more of Yahweh Shai, probably, mm -hmm. you know, tomorrow. Because we're in a double Sabbath, right? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so we might, you know, carry it over, is what I'm saying. But go ahead, um, Ryan, because we probably ain't going to be able to get everything in. Uh, you want to just do that then? Like, for the yeah. the new moon, just deal, how we dealt with the, the origins of Christmas, deal with Yahweh yeah, Shai's right. birthday? Okay, that's cool. Kind of, kind of. It's getting kind of late anyway, because we had, you know, we had to deal with the other stuff earlier. Uh, and this is on 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 uh, stranger strange origins of modern kink. Strange origins of modern kink. Dot dot oh, wordpress dot <laughs> com. Come on. And this is dealing with Christmas. This is dealing with the the uh, goodwill to all men. Uh, holly Jolly Christmas, uh, huh. the Grinch, mistletoes, eggnog. To uh, I'm gonna leave it at that, but yeah, we didn't even get into you, you log. That's a whole nother freakism. And just, just look yeah. at that go, with, with the brother that go back to you. Just take a look at that image and think about what the brother brought out with milk and cookies, and you should kind of be able to put two and two together. Oh man, man, come on, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then, like, it's about the festival of Bacchus, that goes into the devil, all right? Which we have down here every year for, uh, for Mardi Gras, uh, the Bacchus Parade. It's the worship of the devil, man. <clears throat> this is what's going on. You got you to gotta learn. No, You know, this is the, 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 the nastiness of the scripture. This is the part that you got to know, you know? I mean, it is what it is. But go ahead. And this is the article again titled Roman Orgies and Toy Giving for Christmas. The <laughs> wide the widespread given given all kinds of toys, the widespread orgies that occurred during the ancient Roman festival of Bacchus or Bacchanalia, 
and Bacchus was, a, if I believe, the Roman god of wine. That was one of his attributes, and, and the Greek version would have been Dionysus, produced an interesting historical curiosity, which persists to this day. Remember, who can say this or that is new? There's nothing new under the sun. The presentation of gifts during Christmas, mass, mass, large sexual encounters usually occurring on the stage of an outdoor amphitheater included hundreds of anonymous mass participants and continued for 14 continuous days and nights observed primarily in Italy's central and southern peninsula these orgies were derived from the Greek Dionys Dionysian mysteries and involved a series of esoteric rituals. The Greco-Roman god Bacchus represented the human desire for ecstasy, it just being in, a, in an ecstatic state. You're ready to, ready to just feel and do and touch and, and be touched by everything. <laughs> and the bizarre rituals performed before audiences that often numbered in the thousands were designed to eliminate inhibition and open the gateway to perfect abandonment and human pleasure. Hey, we, this, this, this next, this is going to be the, this is going to be it right here. Do, do as thou will. Anything goes. And, and, and just look at these people today, uh, especially uh, shit, especially, you know, you're around your millennials and, and on down, they just into anything. The, they uh, what's it called? A uh, con from, from the brother Gina Swift chariots. Bacchus, the Greek god of wine, called also Dionysus. And can somebody get me, get me, uh, real quick that first Peter's where it talks in, goes into the reveling? First Peter's, uh, four, 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 and five. So you can start at verse one and read down to verse four, Baba Kasha. <clears throat> No, I got you. Okay, this is okay. uh, First Peter four and one. It says, "For as much then as Hamashiach has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin." Hey, and we're suffering right now in the flesh. We got our. We, we're trying to do the best we can. They found the law, statutes, and commandments to the best we can, afflicting ourselves in the flesh. And, and building up our spirit, not following after these, these practices that we used to follow in the world. While we have to live in this society with these people, especially right now, just going, going ham, following after these practices, giving gifts, orgies, kissing under the mistletoe, getting drunk, being in a state of, of modern ecstasy. Keep going on. Uh, verse two, it says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. I'm going to pull up that la that first paragraph again. What the the second one, Baba Kasha? Yeah, go down the bottom. Okay. What did it say towards the end? The Greco-Roman god Bacchus represented the human desire of ecstasy, a hey, the lusts of men, and the bizarre rituals performed before the audience that often numbered in the thousands were designed to eliminate inhibition a hey, any type of uh uh reservations on doing anything hey anything goes the no rules abound and open a gateway to perfect abandonment and human pleasure i Keep finish it up okay. the, uh paragraph that's the that's the one right there kind of kind of <laughs> during the winter solstice the shortest of the year the crowds swelled as the rituals reached their climax the naked, exhausted performers would stand on the stage in a line. Salakia. From the stone seats of the amphitheater, the audience would toss ancient sex toys onto the stage. These toys would be many different kinds, including dildos, butt plugs, and primitive leather strap-ons. However, these objects would be a surprise to all as they were hidden by colorful wrappings. These gifts were said to represent human generosity. I, I bet so. And that spirit of giving, hey, I bet so, was believed in ancient times to be the spiritual force that drove away the growing darkness 
and brought a new spring into the world. More sex magic. What? The, the winter symbolizes death and spring symbolizes life. A plant seeds being planted and new life springing forth. The performers would dive energetically for the offered presents. This has become a common scene on Christmas morning in modern times, but with children this time, a hey, children back then too. So Christmas morning goes back to handing people dildos and strap-ons. That's that's madness. <laughs> hey, hey, but wrapping them in colorful wrapping, huh? You can't forget yeah. that part. There you go. It's in your face, man. Literally. Yeah. In your face. <laughs> man. You don't know. Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs> and, and, a, and a happy new year, you filthy yeah. animal. <laughs> Big freaks. But can you can you get that verse uh three? Uh, this verse three it says for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. And we just read some of the wills of the Gentiles getting getting butt ass naked on a giant stage, having mass orgies, and then having colorful dildos and butt plugs and, and strap ons thrown at you. It says, when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. And that's you, there's a lot to unpack in there. What what is a we already know what what what, what lusts are, but let's see what la lasciviousness is. Lasciviousness is in the Strong's is G seven sixty six, as asilgia. Unbridled lust, access, licentiousness, lasciviousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shamelessness, insolent, in insolence. And again, what did it just say during these holidays that people just abandon all inhibitions and give themselves over to their lusts, ecstasy, all abandonment, <laughs> just straight lasciviousness, lust. Lusts, excess of wine, Bacchus, the god of wine, Saturnalia, revelings, banquetings, and you know, banquetings, you get all the food together, you eat, you have a good time, abominable idolatries, worshiping, worshiping all these uh, gods and sex magic out here and practices. And, and of course, this is talking about during the Roman time. So as, as uh, Peter was writing this, a he was living during the times of the ancient Christmas, the ancient Saturnalia, when, when these things were taking place in, 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 their, in their full force. But I want to get that word, uh, revelings. G2970, comos, a revel, a carousel, a nocturnal and riotous procession of half-drunken and frolicsome fellows who after supper parade through the streets with torches and music in honor of Bacchus or some other deity and sing and play before houses of male and female friends. What should that sound like? Christmas, Christmas caroling, going door to door, singing, singing your famous, your, your favorite Christmas songs. And then just in general, we see people do this. They get drunk on the weekends. They go walk through the streets, make noises, be assholes. And then especially down here during Mardi Gras, which is a, a, a damn a, a, a freak fest, people get drunk and go through the streets and, and revel and, and uh, go to Bacchus Parade. Hence, use generally of feasts and drinking parties that are protracted till late at night and indulge in revelry. And as we read from this article, this, this, uh, this freak fest went on for two, two weeks. And during Saturnalia, people go through the streets and, and drink and, and, and be frolicsome fellows and have a good old time. So everything, everything that this society, this modern Rome promotes today, hey, it has its origins in, in pagan, demonic sex worship. And after you, after you Israelites who didn't know this information before know this now, and now you're condemned by it. Hey, if you don't, if you still want to do it for the kids or, or you know, it's, it's tradition, Hey, you're going to be destroyed with those kids for the, those traditions. Uh, 
<laughs> Did our brothers have any uh, <clears throat> precepts or anything else they wanted to bring out? Kind of real quick. This is uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 3. It says, but draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore, against whom do you sport yourselves and against whom you make a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not the children of transgression, a seed of falsehood, inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree? Oh, <laughs> hey, it speaks for itself. And it's saying Jake opening his mouth and saying, ah, to get a hey, to well, what you brought out with the with the holly, the holly earth. <laughs> yeah. But just Jake in general, worshiping these these these. These, these these pagan gods is sex worship all that a hey, knowingly or unknowingly yeah you going off if you if you participating in these holidays man all right like nah we understand we have family members and relatives that do they think we get that man but when you actually you know playing a part in these things bro you going off like there's no way around nothing man all right, when you actually, that's why us, A, to be, to use wisdom, try to wiggle your way out of that shit, man. Exactly. Move from around it. If they're doing it by Big Mama House, find an excuse not to go over there, man. Good. All right, it, it ain't like you can't do these things, man. That, this shit's sickening, man. You know, to this point, it's sickening. And to be around it and to know, and you're still in that Christmas spirit, you know what's up with you, Jake. No, nah, so a dangerous game. Yeah, don't, yeah. Get caught, don't get caught with a fucking a ugly sweater on, man. Yeah. What right? <laughs> <laughs> you doing, man? Yeah. There's probably a freak meaning behind that. It gotta be. If the freak milk and cookies freaked out, the tree freaked <laughs> the presents, the ugly sweater is something freaky about. Now I'm gonna Google that shit. <laughs> <laughs> sweater got demons on it. Got something freaky about it. Sure. <laughs> Shit, everything at this point got demons. If it ain't the truth, it got demons on it. That's right. Well, you got it, bro. Hey, but with that, we hope you sincere. Akim and Akwath out there were edified by this Shabbat lesson. And again, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim and Akwath out there. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.